Our second lesson gives us an overview of chemistry. What is matter? Is the first question. Matter is everything that occupies space and has weight. It comes in three different states. It comes in solids, liquids, and a gas state. We can easily see that in water. Solid is ice, liquid is water, and a gas state is vapor or steam. What is energy then? Energy has no mass, nor does it have weight. Energy is measured by its effects on matter. It has the ability to do work and put matter into motion. It comes in a kinetic form, which is when we actually perform work, like a muscle contract, or it comes in potential or an inactive form, and that's a way to store it, like a battery in a car or fat in our body, or simply uh, energy molecules that we can store in muscle tissue and release when we need it. That would be the form glycogen. We have different types of energy in our body. We have chemical energy, that is energy that is stored in substances, in molecules, in bonds that need to be broken to set that energy free. We have one specific energy molecule in our system and that's called ATP. Will be very important coming up soon. We also have electrical energy. In that form, movement of charged particles are the energy. So these are ions, these are electrolytes that have a little bit of a charge with them and they can float from one space to the next and create uh, uh, an energetic current. And then we have mechanical energy and that's an actual muscle contraction for example. Radiant energy is light energy such as visible light or also x-ray. Energy conversion is easy. The only problem is we will lose heat in the process. Let's dive right into atoms, which means incapable of dividing. So for us, that's the smallest stuff we're going to look at. All matter is made up of a limited number of substances called elements, and one particle of an element is called an atom. Looking at their structure, they all have more or less the same makeup. They all have a nucleus which houses protons and protons are positively charged um, um, particles and then it also has neutrons and neutrons do not have a charge in them. And then around that nucleus we have orbits or shells we can call them and in those we have electrons floating around. Electrons have a negative charge. So now we have, an, in the nucleus, we have a proton with a positive charge, and in the shell on the outside, we have a negative charge. When we combine atoms chemically, we make molecules. And chemical reactions occur when atoms combine or dissociate from one another. They form chemical bonds with another atom. Bonds are the interaction between electrons of reacting atoms. That means the electron in the outer shell, furthest apart from the center, the nucleus, will react with another electron of another atom's outer shell. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? The valence is the outermost shell or orbit. One atom's valence electron is the one that will interact with another atom's valence electrons, and then they will form a chemical bond. So therefore, it is the valence that determines the chemical behavior of an atom. Mm -hmm. That brings us to the octet rule. And the octet rule also means the rule of eight. And that means that an atom's valence carries a maximum of eight electrons and is reactive if it carries less than eight. And this is true for most atoms, not the very early numbers. But this octet rule is quite helpful to understand the reactivity of an atom. An inert element is one that has a full valence. 
So that one is not going to be reactive. Only the atoms that don't have a full outer shell, the valence, will be reactive. Holy moly. Well, let's talk about chemical bonds. We have a few types, two main ones, the ionic bond and the covalent bond. Those are the main ones. In an ionic bond, electrons are transferred from one atom to another. This will create charged atoms. And in our body, those are salts or electrolytes. So they will be helpful when we have to have electrical energy generated in our body. We'll use them for that. This is like an atom here, with, with, with transferring an electron, is like when one atom steals the electron from another atom. And the other one just gives it up. That's why those elements at the end will be charged molecules. In a covalent bonds, electrons are shared between atoms. This makes them more stable. Depending on how many electrons are shared, we're going to call those different bonds. We call it a single bond for one electron, a double bond for two, and a triple bond if there's three electrons that are going to be shared. Covalent bonds, bonds also come in polar and in nonpolar flavors. A nonpolar covalent molecule shares the electrons equally, and a good example of that is carbon dioxide. On the other hand, a polar covalent bond shares the electrons unequally, and water is such an example, H2O, that's not an equal sharing. And then that unequal sharing creates, creates a little bit more positivity and a little bit more negativity on different poles, and that will create its own type of bond, and that's known as a hydrogen bond. So positive and negative poles of a polar covalent molecule are attracted to each other, forming weak connections. These are bonds that often form inside larger molecules. They're called intramolecular bonds. So they're in such as in proteins, we have such bonds that help form the shape of a protein. When we're looking at chemical reactions, there are some general types. We have a decomposition reaction, then we have a synthesis reaction, and lastly there we have an exchange reaction. At Decomposition reaction is also called a catabolic uh, reaction, or we have a catabolic process that takes place, and that's a process of breaking something down. Destruction is that. When we do that, we release energy. An example of that is digestion, when we have larger food molecules go into smaller particles. A synthesis reaction is known as, also known as an anabolic or a constructive reaction or process. This uses energy because in this one we're making stuff. So we're building houses. Well, guess what? We're building protein. Uh, and that takes energy. So that examples of that is, is, is growth or repair of uh, worn out tissues, etc. And then the exchange reaction uh, is a molecular switch. And then here we have, uh, lastly, factors that influence chemical reactions such as temperature. The higher the temperature, the faster the atoms move, the higher the rate of reaction, because we bump into each other faster. Concentration, the higher the concentration of an atom, the higher the chance that we have an interaction. Particle size, the smaller the particles, the faster they move, the more possibility they have to interact. And then lastly here we have the biological catalyst, and that is an enzyme. So if you see the word enzyme, you're always thinking of a catalyst. And what is a catalyst? It is a molecule that helps drive a chemical reaction forward. All right, let's dive right into biochemistry.